Hello everyone, my name is Rabbit, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can go from a fresh level 1 character to progressing the end game monolith system in under 2 hours utilizing the dungeon skip mechanics that Last Epoch offers. The plan is simple. Step 1 is to get to Oracle's abode as soon as possible in chapter 5. Then we will finish any efficient side quests that we can for passives and idle slots. After that we will progress normal monoliths until we find a temporal sanctum key. We will then complete the Temporal Sanctum to skip ahead to Chapter 9, and lastly, from there, we will finish out the campaign, unlock factions, and get the last few passives and idle slots we're missing. So what is the Temporal Sanctum? The Temporal Sanctum is one of three dungeons that Last Epoch has to offer, and it can be done once you have found a key for it. You just have to go in, kill the boss, and then the opening to Chapter 9 is located in the same room that you find the Legendary Crafting Station. It's fairly easy to complete when you're in your 60s, but you can wait as long as you want to go in. So why do this instead of just clearing the full campaign? This method essentially lets you progress your monoliths and your campaign at the same time. It also lets you start collecting the end game loot like exalted items much earlier. Overall, it's just a much more efficient way to level a new character. Some tips for going fast are to minimize time killing, maximize time running, keep your movement skill on cooldown, and utilize any roleplay moments or screen transitions to browse your inventory or craft and stack dot affixes early since they are very powerful. Some tips not to die as much are stack physical resistance first, and then void res for chapters 2 and 3, and then necrotic res in chapter 4. I like to add a special rule in my loot filter to recolor items that have these affixes specifically. This can be done pretty quickly once you get the hang of the run, and in this example I was able to go from a level 1 on a fresh account with nothing to clearing my first monolith in just 1 hour and 36 minutes. I'll be replaying most of the campaign at increased speed so you don't have to sit here for the next 2 hours, but I'll add timestamps on any important bit of information in case you want to skip around. I'll be doing the run as a Shatter Strike Spellblade. If you want to play this build, you can follow the leveling and build guides on Max Roll. Alright, starting off, we're going to immediately run to the next zone. We aren't going to be fighting any of the mobs here because we are playing a mage, and so we have basically no AoE at the start unless you melee attack. And so we're just going to be skipping all of these mobs as we don't really need to kill them, and we're also not going to be talking to that dead NPC there because you can just skip that part and go to the next area, and it'll still give you credit anyway. Once you get into the burning forest, you're going to head east. You can skip most of these mobs, but the plant mobs and fire mobs do attack each other, so you can use your abilities to pick them off and have very low health to get some free experience. But we're primarily coming over here to unlock this NPC, so we're going to help him kill all of these NPCs, and afterwards we're going to have the option to click this top slot, and if you just spam click through there, it'll recruit him as an ally, basically, and he has a lot of AoE and freezing, and so he'll help you kill all these mobs. This is going to be a good time to get some early levels before you go and fight any of the mini bosses coming up. Up ahead you'll be fighting the first mini boss, the Forge Soldier. Luckily with this NPC it makes the fight pretty simple so just finish him off and head east into the Keeper's Camp. Once you get into the Keeper's Camp you're gonna immediately head to the next zone. You don't have to talk to anyone here and continue into the next zone will still progress you through the quest, so just speedrun it to there. If you have any leveling uniques, you can stop by the stash and pick those up, but since this is a fresh character, we're just going straight in. At this point, you will see me stop and kill some of these mobs, because I am unlocking Elemental Nova, which is my first AoE. So as soon as I unlock that, I'm going to be spending a little extra time, because as a mage, I'm trying to rush to level 6 as soon as I can, because that's whenever you unlock Glacier which is an extremely powerful spell to use whenever you're leveling a mage. In my opinion, it does more damage and more AoE than anything else you have in your toolkit, and it'll just carry you all the way to monoliths. And as you saw, I did die there. If you die, it's not usually a big deal. It doesn't put you back to town or anything. It'll keep you in the same zone and just be a minor setback. So just respawn and keep going until you get to the boss here. Once you kill the boss, continue moving forward until you get to this NPC here where we will be accepting our first side quest. Once you've talked to him, immediately run up north and go into the storerooms. Once 
once you get to this point in the storerooms, you'll have to fight another Ford Soldier mini boss. Just kill him and then interact with the Siege Golem up in the corner there, and then you can immediately run out and turn in the quest. Turn in the quest for a passive point and then continue moving on towards your main quest marker. Once you cross the bridge, we'll need to talk to this Keeper Guard before we can progress any further, but we do have to wait out a little bit of our peeps. So this is a great time to look through your inventory, do a little crafting, whatever you need to do while we wait for this to play out. As soon as he gets carried off, you can talk to the Keeper Guard and then immediately teleport back to the Keeper's Camp. Once you get into the Keeper's Camp, just run up and talk to Keeper Alina here, and then immediately go out east to the Highlands. Continue running through the highlands as normal, and you can stop and kill all of these big plant cow looking things because they're all rares, and rares in this game always drop a rare item, so it can be a good source of some early upgrades before you move on to the next chapter. Now that we're in the summit, we're coming up on the boss fight for chapter one. So again, there's a little bit of RP here, so it's a good time to just look through your inventory, equip any upgrades you have, and once he's activated, you can just fight and kill him. Again, pretty easy fight. Just dodge his attacks and keep your health up and you'll be just fine. Once you've killed him, you can immediately go out east and talk to Keeper Balthos and then go back to the Keeper's camp. Once you're in the Keeper's camp, come up and talk to Keeper Lena and Keeper Balthas, and then you'll have another longer RP session where he's going to pull out the Epoch and send you ahead. So you can, again, look through a little bit of your inventory until you get to the Crumbling Ruins. Again, once we get here, we're just going to be running straight through the next zone. There's nothing we have to do here. Once you get into Last Refuge outskirts, you can skip the first NPC and immediately go and accept the side quest. Proceed forward and talk to the first of the three NPCs, and I actually believe I made a mistake here because you can actually go to the right and go across this little bridge, and I believe it's faster if you talk to the southern NPC first before you go where I did because it'll eliminate a little bit of the backtracking. But either way, talk to all three NPCs in the zone and then continue ahead. Once you get into the council chambers, immediately go talk with Captain Lior and turn in the quest, and the same with Ella Gaspar. And once you turn in his quest, you can immediately grab your idols and then go up to the left to enter the next zone. Once you're in the last archive, we're immediately going to go into Urza's library for our next side quest. Proceed up ahead until you find the ledger, kill the monsters guarding it, and then you're going to take it and then immediately return to the previous zone.
Once you've defeated the students, you'll teleport back to the council chambers and return to Elder Gaspar. Before you move on, we're going to turn in our side quest over on the left side to get a unique. At this point, you have two choices. If you talk to the Elder on the left, you can get the Avarice Gloves, and if you talk to the Gambler on the right, you can get the Gambler's Fallacy. Most people just take the Avarice Gloves because they give you some elemental res as well as a source of leech, but if you like crit, then you could go with the Amulet, but in this clip, we are going to go with the Avarice Gloves because we are playing a mage, and it helps us more. Once you've entered the precipice, just continue forward following your main quest marker. Once you've killed the Idol of Ruin, a portal will spawn on the left. We're going to take that to go into the next zone. This is another good time to sort through your inventory, especially after you've clicked the portal because you will have to go through this sort of load screen and you can interact with your inventory while it's going. So just do that, get everything sorted, look for upgrades, and then continue on. Once you get into the ancient cavern, just go to the left, you're going to make a loop around and you're going to find another time rift. Once you find it, just go through it. Once you've entered the armory, continue into this little arena, kill all the mobs and the boss that spawns, and then continue on. You do not need to stop at the forge to craft anything. Just skip that and keep moving. Once you've entered the lower district, this is where you're going to be fighting the main boss of chapter 2. Just kill him and then progress on to the end of time through the portal that he spawns. Once you get to the end of time, head to the right and talk to this NPC to turn in the quest, and then go up the ramp to unlock your mastery. In this playthrough, we're going to be doing the Spellblade because it's something that I'm comfortable with and I think it is a pretty strong mastery and it excels in early monoliths, which we'll see later on. You've woke up. Then close your eyes. Um, I see Get your mastery and then go through the portal that he spawns. That strength will be necessary if our world, our reality, is to have any hope. When you get back to the council chambers, go turn in the quest to Elder Gaspar, and then we're immediately going to run down to the bottom right and open up the door. You can skip talking to any of the NPCs here, because we'll be talking to them later. Interact with the door to dispel the barrier, and continue on. Once you get into the cultist camp, you can skip talking to any NPCs. I talked to this one because it was a mistake. And you can immediately head down south to go to the next zone in the well room docks. 
once you're in the docks, you can just progress towards your main quest marker down towards the waypoint and then complete that and we'll head back to town. Once you get to the marker, run up the little steps to spawn the Void Centipede mini-boss, kill it, run down and pick up the Symbol of Hope, and then teleport right back to town. Once you're back in the cultist camp, we're immediately going to head out through the top left exit. Continue moving towards your main quest objective once you enter the ruins of Wellrun. You can skip killing any of the side mobs for the quest because we aren't going to be completing that side quest. Move forward and talk to the last Imperial NPC here and then run around the circle and kill the three phylacteries that you're going to be finding to complete this portion of the side quest. When you go to turn in this quest, he opens up the path that you can run through behind them, but we're actually immediately going to teleport back to the cultist camp, because it's going to put us right next to the quest marker, mm -hmm. as opposed to entering in the top part of town and having to run all the way back. Now that we've entered the ritual site, from this point on, we're going to be skipping all side quests and only focusing on the main objective. So just continue through all of these maps and follow the main quest marker and do them. Don't stray the path and don't do anything to the side. We're going to come back and do some of that stuff later on. Continue through your main quest until we get to chapter 5. And once we get there, we're going to double back and complete some of the side quests that we've been skipping. Once you enter the Lotus Halls, you can immediately run to the left. You do not have to go to that quest marker and hug the left side wall all the way until you get to the end where it curves off to the right and then run straight all the way down until you find this little statue that you can interact with to open up the portal. Once the portal spawns, we're gonna go through, check our inventory, and then pick up the shard right here. And then instead of going through the portal that spawns, we're gonna teleport back to the previous zone first and then teleport back to the Lotus Halls. The reason why we teleport back to the previous zone is that whenever you enter or leave town, you have to interact with like these matchmaking servers, and on launch that was really bad, so this could save you some potential uh, like long load screens if you're playing online. Once you've gotten back into the Lotus Halls, you only need one of these uh, like shards to activate the bridge, so just go down, activate the bridge, and pass through to the Sanctum Bastille and then follow this right side wall to progress towards the boss of chapter three. Once you get back to the end of time, run up the ramp, turn in the quest, and then go through the portal that he spawns to enter chapter 4. At this point in the story, Necrotic Res is going to become more important, and we're pretty much done with a lot of the void damage that we're going to be taking. So start transitioning your gear over to that.
Once you enter Imperial Well Run, immediately go towards the quest marker and kill this little mini boss that's guarding this NPC. Interact with her, and that'll let you continue forward up in the northwestern exit of the zone. Once you enter Soul Warden's Road, just head down the road until you come to this gate. Whenever you walk up to it, it should trigger the event. You're just going to have to kill a bunch of zombies that spawn. Once they're all dead, the gate will open and you can continue on like normal. When you get up here by the waypoint, just skip that time rift. We're going to come back to that later. Once you get to this seer, you'll interact with her and she's going to spawn all of these monsters. Just kill them and then interact with her again once you're able to. Once you talk to her, we're going to head back east and go through this little side path that we skipped earlier to head towards the boss of this chapter. Coming out now, we're going to be fighting Admiral Harton, who is the boss for Chapter 4. Just kill him and then talk to the guy in the cage and head up to the north side of the ship where you can jump off and continue into Chapter 5. Once you're in the Shining Cove, just come up here, talk to Auric, and then continue towards the main quest objective. Once you get here, talk to the NPC on the bridge before moving into the next zone.
All right, once you get to the Oracle's Abode, we're going to turn in a couple of quests here and accept one, and then we're going to go back and do all of the side quests that we've been skipping that are going to be giving us some of our idle slots and our passive points. So continue up ahead, stash any items if you have to, and talk to the Shrine Maiden to accept the quest, and then continue on to the Oracle to turn in the quest that she has to get your passive point. All right, at this point, we're going to go back and do the sad objectives. So immediately open up your map, go to the Ruined Era, and we're going to be going to the Shattered Valley Waypoint. Once you enter the Shattered Valley, immediately head north to the Abandoned Tunnel and complete the side quest in this objective by finding the tome and taking it. Once you pick up the tome, we're immediately going to teleport right back to the Shattered Valley. Once we're back in the Shattered Valley, we're going to be running south and going through the time rift that we skipped earlier. You're going to run through the ancient forest, heading northeast until you find the quest marker where you're going to be killing the primeval dragon boss. Once you kill the primeval dragon, we're going to be opening up our map, going back to the ruined era, and teleporting to the council chambers to turn these in. Once you're back here in the council chambers, just run down and turn in both these quests. One of them just gives gold, and the other one is going to give us our idle slots. So then we're going to be going to the imperial era, and then teleporting to the risen lake waypoint. Once you're in the Risen Lake, we're going to be heading up north and going through the other time rift that we skipped earlier. Finish killing off the Idol of Ruin to get your rewards, and then we will be teleporting back to the Imperial Era in the Shining Cove near Majoka. Finish killing Orchard Wreck the Survivor and then make sure you pick up the Sapphire Tablets that's laying on the table right up north of them. Once you do that, make sure you enter the Temporal Sanctum Dungeon entrance and unlock the waypoint there because we will be needing it later to do the campaign skip. Once you unlock the entrance, go back to the Imperial Era and we're going to be teleporting back to the Oracle's Abode to turn in the Sapphire Tablet quest. At this point, we're completely done with any questing that we're going to be doing before we do the campaign skip. So we can immediately head back to the end of time and go straight into Monoliths. And just to show you that this is something that is achievable, I'm going to be going in, checking for some upgrades, and then I'll dive straight in to do one of the Monoliths, even though I am underleveled, just to show you that depending on your build, you can do it early, and being in the level 30 range should be more than comfortable for you to do this.
just like that we're going to be finishing up our first monolith on our brand new fresh character i'm going to pull up my stats here and show you that in just one hour and 36 minutes we're able to start fresh level one get all the way to monoliths get 13 passive rewards and five of our idols and we're only level 31. so there you have it a fresh level 1 character with nothing to clearing endgame at a reasonable pace in just 1 hour and 36 minutes. This will take you a bit longer if you're new or your leveling build isn't as powerful, but either way it's a very good method to practice if you plan on making ults in last epoch. The biggest downside to rerolling in your character is having to fully clear the entire campaign every time. So I hope this helped save you some time, and if it did then leave a like and a comment down below. I'm planning on posting a part 2 to this video where I'll show you how to complete the Temporal Sanctum and finish up chapter 9, so if that's something you want to see then let me know. Thanks again for watching, my name is Rabbit and I will see you in the next one.